my position and that of my counterparts who do what I do at other institutions is providing a medical backup um, to researchers who are doing work with emerging pathogens, so potential exposure to an emerging pathogen in a researcher. But we also provide um, feedback both at the policy level and at the medical level in terms of how do we take this information about emerging pathogens that we don't know much about and come up with sensible clinical protocols. Um, for example, we didn't know a lot about what the full spectrum of how Ebola presents um, uh, before this epidemic. There were so few cases um, and they happened in areas with very few resources so you couldn't capture the full scope of what this disease looked like. Our, my cha the challenge for me and my counterparts has really been um, how do we better um, understand what the pathophysiology or, or the appearance of this disease um, is in humans? Um, a lot of researchers that are at this conference look at animal models and the way as, as well as animal models are, they don't perfectly reflect what human disease is like. So part, that's part of our challenge. The second piece of, um, of that is how do we then take important information from what we're seeing in humans and give it back to the researchers and say, you know what, your animal model is not accurate in this way. Or, hey, we're seeing this in humans. Do you have an explanation for that in, in what you're doing in your research? And so we occupy this in-between space that allows us to see the human disease and allows us to take the information as it's evolving from our researchers and converge the two. I think the, the important thing that came out of this epidemic is you may have the best international surveillance systems, you may have the best research, but in the end, whether or not we pick up emerging infectious diseases comes down to those communities that, that are, um, have low resources and whether those patients who develop these emerging infectious diseases have access to care or not. And I think what this epidemic, the Ebola epidemic and then the Zika epidemic have really taught us is, is that that little blind spot right before we discover that big cluster of cases is important. How do we more quickly um, find those, those first hundred patients with an emerging pathogen? And I think a lot more attention is now being paid to that. So I'm, I'm actually very optimistic about the future in that regard. I think the one thing that I would like to see change is um, the quality of care we provide patients. A lot of times in the heat of an outbreak, we are put into this false dichotomy that somehow because it's an emergency, we, just can, we should just give whatever is possible. What I think we need to do is step back and think about what is possible if we reimagine that and provide those resources to begin with. Why was it so hard to give? pain relief to patients with Ebola. Yes, that may not be the center of what's causing them to die, but it's what's affecting their quality of care. Why was it so hard for us to ensure that um, we decrease transmission between patients within Ebola treatment units? You know, um, sure, that number may have been very small, but to the person who potentially got infected within the Ebola treatment unit, that was a big thing for that one person. So I think we need to sort of step back and say, even in the heat of an outbreak, we need to be provide better quality of care.